So in our last lesson, if you remember, we focused mainly on quantifiers. And we learned that there are many different ways of talking about quantities. And you can talk about small quantities, you can talk about large quantities, and you can also use quantifiers when you want to mention something which is uh, more than you need, more than you want. And we also have another quantifier for things which are less than you want. And you can use enough if it's the right uh, quantity, if it's the correct quantity. You can also use not any and no if you want to talk about zero quantity. Excuse me. So we talked about this. And uh, we also, if you remember, <clears throat> we also, before that, we also talked about containers. And containers are also very useful to, to use when you want to talk about um, when you want to talk about uncountable things or uncountable nouns. So you just use a container and it makes it much more easier to talk about them. So instead of saying, I've got some soup or I've got a lot of soup, you can say, I've got a carton of soup. I've got a packet of soup. Or for example, instead of saying, I've got some oil, I haven't got some oil, I've got a lot of oil, I've got a bit of oil. It's still not clear how much you've got exactly. But if you say, for example, I've got a bottle of oil, I've got two bottles of, uh, bottles of olive oil, I've got three bottles of olive oil, suddenly it becomes really clear for the listener what you're talking about. So this is, this is the, the issue with containers. This is the, the idea I mean with uh, containers. So now, since we finished talking about quantifiers, uh, we also talked about uh, how to use some and any, many and much. Um, some and any, I think, are they are so important that we've been talking about them since elementary because uh, we use them a lot. And they're important and they're easy to they're easy to confuse. So you need to know how to use uh, some and any. Um, What else? Ah, much and many. So much and many are also more commonly used in questions or, uh, sorry, I mean in negatives, more than we use them in, in negatives. Um, so this is also important to keep in mind. So we talked about this. We also talked about our cities using uh, quantifiers. There's too much rubbish in the streets. There aren't enough places to go at night. Um, there aren't any cinemas, there aren't any galleries, there's too much pollution. All of these ideas we discussed together. So in today's lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about prefixes, about opposites. Uh, so it's, it's going to be mainly a, a vocabulary lesson. And we also have a news report. So we want to learn how to read a newspaper article and how to understand a news report. This is what we want to do today. First of all, let's start with these general questions. So question number one, it says here, when, first of all, let's check the title, sorry. Dangers at sea, dangers at sea. So, so let's, take a, let's take a look at the first question. So it says here, when did you last go to the beach? Where was it and what did you do there? Can you remember the last time you went to the beach, Malak? Maybe since two years. <laughs> two years ago, you went to the beach. But yeah. what, what, was yeah. it here in, in Libya or was it in another country? Uh, I see the beach, but uh, maybe um, just uh, look from, uh, just walk, uh, maybe last year. Last year? Just walk. Uh, you, you, yes. you walked along the beach. Yeah. That's that's nice. But where where was this? Was it here in Libya? Uh, no, in Istanbul. Ah, in Istanbul. But uh, Tripoli, maybe since uh, two years. Two two years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, I see. Okay. But do you have a favorite beach? Is there a beach that you like? More than no, any? no. You, you don't have a specific beach you you like. 
No. 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 Okay. But but generally speaking, what what do you think are some of the some of the common problems that maybe people can have at the beach? Maybe um, um, rubbish on the beach. A lot of rubbish. Okay. So in some beaches and, there's uh, rubbish. Correct. This is a problem. What else? Yes. Uh, also. Um, uh, Maybe um, crowded in uh, the summer. Uh, it is not. Uh, and mm -hmm. you uh, find uh, you try to find a place uh, is uh, uh, comfort and uh, empty. Mm. But uh, I think it's crowded. That's true, especially if it's a if it's a tourist destination or maybe if the place is famous for beautiful beaches, then maybe you're right, it will be very crowded, I think. But what other problems maybe people who visit the beach can have? I mean, like the families or the, the children or the adults, what are common, common problems that maybe people can face when they go to the beach? Maybe uh, the family, um, uh, when you go with your uh, kids, um, I think you fear about uh, them uh, if uh, they uh, go away uh, inside the beach and they try to uh, to put your, uh, your eyes on uh, them. Mm. You, mean, you, mean, you mean you have to be careful so they don't, they don't go too deep into the sea and maybe drown or something? Yeah. Is, is that what you're saying? Yes. Or, or are you talking about other problems, not, not drowning? No, about drowning, yes. Yeah. That's, I... uh, that's a problem for me, yeah. Mm. Do you know anybody who, maybe not from the family or, I mean, anybody maybe, you've heard that they're, mm. who had a ch child that drowned maybe? No, no, I, I hear, I hear about uh, somebody who, um, um, maybe in uh, Sabha too, but we have, don't have a beach and the sea, but uh, we have a, the lake? A, a, pool, a pool, a pool, swimming pools, you mean uh, people who, who drown yes, in swimming, swimming pools? Pool, yeah, yes, uh, not a pool, it's um, a lake? Um, it means uh, Jabia. Jabia. Ah, uh, Jabia. I don't know what to say in English, but maybe you can say um, because we don't. They don't use them, but you can say uh, maybe a watering uh, pool. Maybe in a farm, it's it's used for watering plants. We don't have here, but uh, a, a reservoir. I think uh, I hear a lot of kids. Mm, a lot of kids drown in in. In the yes, uh, try to uh, in on uh, in uh, these uh, places <laughs> and drown. I hear yeah. a lot of things like this. So, so it happens a lot. So you mean in Tibet? Like, so, uh, you don't like? I don't like to go to the beach or mm. uh, something like this because I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, my kids. will will drown maybe. Mm -hmm. But, but do they know how yeah. to swim? Do you think it's important to teach children how to swim? Yes, yes, I know that's important, but uh, I don't have, uh, mm, I try to teach them on schools uh, at the summer, but uh, maybe uh, there isn't, uh, there aren't uh, near places um, mm. beside uh, me when I go, when I went there. Mm, I see. So it's not it's not very easy for you to find maybe a teacher or a coach yeah. to train them how to swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. Okay. So we're going to listen to a story now, and it's also related to the sea. It's related to it's related to the beach and that kind of thing. But first of all, there are a few words I want you to take a look at. So we have uh, a shark, <clears throat> we have attack, we have the verb bite, of course in the past simple bit, in the present perfect uh, bitten, 
So bite, bit, bit it. And we have oxygen, okay? So now I'm going to play uh, a TV news report for you. And I want you to, I want you to answer these questions, okay? So we have a few questions, but um, maybe, maybe it's better if you read the questions first, Manak, okay? T take take a, mi a minute, just quickly check questions number one and four, and when you're ready, okay. just let me know so I can play the CD for you. <clears throat> Track 34. A British tourist has been attacked by a shark off the coast of Texas, making it the eighth shark attack in America this year. We now go over live to Andrew Evans for a special report. Andrew, I understand that the man didn't do anything unusual to cause this attack. Yes, that's right, Beverly. Mark Skipper, a 49-year-old man from Oxford, was just swimming on his own, quite close to the beach, when he was attacked. How badly was he hurt? Well, we don't have much information yet, but we know that his leg was bitten quite badly. He was immediately taken to hospital, and we're waiting to hear how he's doing. So, Andrew, why are the sharks coming in so close? Well, Ryan Williamson, who works for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, believes that the increase in shark attacks is because of what they call dead zones. These are areas in the ocean where there isn't enough oxygen, so all the fish die. So there aren't any fish for the sharks to eat? Exactly. Many of these dead zones are actually quite close to the coast, so the sharks come in closer and closer looking for food. So what turns an area of the ocean into a dead zone? I'm afraid it's us, Beverly. People. There's too much pollution in the sea and it's killing all the fish. And these dead zones cover fairly large areas. The one we're talking about here, for example, covers about 5,800 square miles. And are these dead zones only around the US coast? No, they're not. According to the United Nations, there are over 400 dead zones around the world. That's nearly three times as many as there were five years ago. So is the Wildlife Department in Texas now saying that people shouldn't go swimming? No, they aren't telling people to stay out of the water, but they've advised holidaymakers not to go swimming early in the morning or in the evening, because those are the times when sharks feed. Thank you, Andrew Evans, for that report. OK, <clears throat> so that was an example of a news report. But uh, let's just focus on the first four questions, OK? So what's the problem? What, ha what happened in the USA, according to the news report? Um, maybe shark uh, close uh, to the beach. OK, that's correct. But what happened exactly? You're right, there was a shark uh, close man, to the beach. Uh -huh. Yes, a man, uh, maybe a shark attacked a man. Correct. What did it do exactly? Um, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, he uh, ran, uh, maybe he swim, uh, then he uh, go uh, behind him, behind uh, Okay, all right, okay. But they also talked about something else. They mentioned dead zones. What, 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 are, what are dead zones? Yes, dead zones, uh, it's uh, places uh, when uh, um, a shark uh, uh, come uh, uh, to closer to the beach uh, after the dead zones, uh, zones uh, uh, it want uh, 
to eat, maybe to uh, um, did some maybe uh, this is for a shark. Uh, don't uh, don't try to go there uh, to these places. Mm. But but what what causes them? What causes uh, dead zones? How do they happen? From what? I don't know. Mm, okay, okay. And and how many of them are are there in the world? You mentioned the number. Um, maybe five thousand. Mm, okay. All right. So now, before we listen again, because we're going to listen again, I want you to also take a look at mm -hmm. uh, at the second part of the question. So this way, we can listen again to check if these are. So. Just guess, even if you're not sure, that's okay. So according to the news report, the reporter said there have been six shark attacks. <clears throat> or eight shark attacks. Can you remember? Welcome back. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so so I don't know if you remember how much you remember, but uh, we'll check. So let's start with number one. So according to the news reporter, he said there were six, there have been six shark attacks or eight shark attacks in the USA this year. Can you remember the number of shark mm -hmm. attacks? Maybe six. Okay, let's choose six. And then they talked about a tourist. So a tourist was attacked a long way from the beach or quite near the beach. Um, a long way. Okay. Then it says he was bitten on the arm. He was bitten on the leg. I don't remember because I'm not uh, I'm not a uh, uh, good listening listener. <laughs> yeah, that's okay because we're gonna listen again anyway, okay. so we can check these. But choose choose the one that you feel. Okay, maybe uh, his legs. Okay. Then number four it says the dead zone off the coast of Texas is quite small, or very big. A very big, I think. Uh, okay. And number five, it says there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot more dead zones than, they, than there were five years ago, or there are a few more dead zones than there were five years ago. Few, a few more. Okay. Few. And here, okay. And here it says the evening is a good time to go swimming near, near a dead zone. And the evening is a bad time to go swimming near a dead zone. Bad time. Bad oh, time. Okay. Number seven, it says the Texas Wildlife Department are telling people to stop swimming in the sea or aren't telling people to swim to stop swimming in the sea. Yes, are are telling. Okay. So now let's check these answers. And also check the answers for, okay, I, I have a suggestion. Would you like to listen with the script? Do you think that okay. will help? I think that's better, mm -hmm. right? This way you can see also yeah. the words. Okay, let's go there. But I think you also need to, you also need to do this as well, not only in our lessons. I mean, even, even in your free time, uh, if you get any free time, just download a movie and uh, try downloading. I try, uh, but I can't. English, English, I can't, uh... English subtitles. Mm -hmm. Don't don't uh, okay. use use English subtitles, not Arabic. Oh, oh, ما تخليش من غير subtitles بكر. استعمليهم غير ما تستعمليش بتاع اللغة العربية بس. It will become very easy if you can okay. do this. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's take a look. Track thirty. 
34, sorry. Room should be 34. CT2, track 34. Okay, this is CT2. Here it is. Can you see it on the right side here? This is where where yes. the news where the news report starts. Okay, here we go. Let's start. Track 34. A British tourist has been attacked by a shark off the coast of Texas, making it the eighth shark attack in America this year. We now go over live to Andrew Evans for a special report. Andrew, I understand that the man didn't do anything unusual to cause this attack. Yes, that's right, Beverly. Mark Skipper, a 49-year-old man from Oxford, was just swimming on his own quite close to the beach when he was attacked. How badly was he hurt? Well, we don't have much information yet, but we know that his leg was bitten quite badly. He was immediately taken to hospital and we're waiting to hear how he's doing. So, Andrew, why are the sharks coming in so close? Well, Ryan Williamson, who works for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, believes that the increase in shark attacks is because of what they call dead zones. These are areas in the ocean where there isn't enough oxygen, so all the fish die. So there aren't any fish for the sharks to eat? Exactly. Many of these dead zones are actually quite close to the coast, so the sharks come in closer and closer looking for food. So what turns an area of the ocean into a dead zone? I'm afraid it's us, Beverly. People. There's too much pollution in the sea and it's killing all the fish. And these dead zones cover fairly large areas. The one we're talking about here, for example, covers about 5,800 square miles. And are these dead zones only around the US coast? No, they're not. According to the United Nations, there are over 400 dead zones around the world. That's nearly three times as many as there were five years ago. So is the Wildlife Department in Texas now saying that people shouldn't go swimming? No, they aren't telling people to stay out of the water, but they've advised holidaymakers not to go swimming early in the morning or in the evening, because those are the times when sharks feed. Thank you, Andrew Evans, for that report. Yeah. Okay, so are there any answers you would like to change? Yes. Okay, let's let's take a look. So let's start with the first one. So first of all, what's I think number one we already answered it. There was a there was mm -hmm. a shark a, a, a shark attack. But what what are dead zones? What did you understand? Uh, without uh, oxygen, when the shark uh, uh, stay there, because there is no fish, uh, no fish there, uh, because uh, the sea without oxygen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and how how do they happen? What causes it? Um, a shark uh, um, look for uh, for food. That's correct. This, that's the reason why sharks are getting closer to the beach because they're looking for food. That's correct. But but the, but this area of uh, this area of ocean or sea, like you said, without oxygen and no fish, how does it happen? What causes mm -hmm. it? Are are they normal? That 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 zones or are they are they no. a problem? Um, a problem, of course, it's a problem. Yes, because because sharks will will run away from dead zones and look for other areas with fish, right? To eat. Mm -hmm. But but, do you remember what what what's the reason? How did they happen? What causes them? Because the reporter she asked uh, she asked uh, Michael. Or what's Simon or whatever yeah, his name was about the accident, about mm, the accident. Correct. Or... She asked him about the accident, but when he said 
the, the reason of, for the accident is that sharks are getting closer to the beaches because there are, yeah. many, there are many dead zones. And of course, in dead zones, like you said, there are no fish, right? So the sharks are hungry, they, yeah. want, to, they want to eat. But we don't know, or I don't know, you didn't tell me what causes dead zones? What, how do they happen? What's the reason they happen? I told you about uh, the sea without oxygen, maybe. This is the answer. That, uh, this is the answer for question number two. The definition, the definition of a dead zone. Mm -hmm. That's correct. A sea, an area yeah. in the sea or the ocean with no oxygen. That's correct. But how does it happen? How does it start? What's what causes it? This is question number three. It's a different answer. I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. Remember. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you remember, if uh, he said, the man explained it, he said, it's pollution. So when you oh, have yeah. pollution, yes, I hear that. Yes. remember? Yeah. They mentioned pollution in yes. the ocean. If you have too much pollution in the sea, all the fish die because uh, mm -hmm. it, affects, it affects the oxygen in the area. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you remember the number of dead zones around the world? Yes, yes. 400. That's correct. That's right. Okay. So now, how many attacks? Were they six or eight? Eight. Correct. And the tourist, was he attacked far from the beach or near the beach? Quite near, quite near the beach. That's right. I think number three, you answered it correctly. He, yes, he was bitten. Late. Like, yeah. So the dead zone off the coast of Texas, is it small or is it big? Maybe big, maybe very big. It's actually big. Yeah, but right. I'm not sure. Yeah. And it says, do you think the number of dead zones, are they, are they a lot more than five years ago or a few more? Mm, maybe a lot. A lot. Actually, the, the reporter mm -hmm. said their number increased compared to five years ago. And uh, the evening, is it a good time to swim or a bad time? No, bad, bad. Evening and morning. But why? Why is it bad? Because the shark is uh, appear at this time. Correct. Yeah, the sharks eat usually at, at this time. They feed. And number seven, did the Texas Wildlife Department, did they say are they telling people maybe, not to yeah. swim or yeah. aren't they aren't maybe are are telling actually of, uh, no no mm -hmm. no aren't. aren't because if they told them they uh, the tourists uh, don't do that exactly yeah so they they just said don't swim in the evening that's what they said don't swim early in the evening early in the morning and late in the evening that's what they, that's oh, what they told them. Alaykum salam. Hello. How are you today? Hi, Hajar. I'm fine, thanks. I'm okay. Hi. Hi, Hajar. How are you? Fine, alhamdulillah. How about you? Alhamdulillah, fine. Okay. So, all the answers are correct. That's great. Okay, so this is a... Um, we can skip this kind of, but they just want you to pay attention to linking. We've talked a lot about linking in the past. So I'm just going to show you different types of linking. One of them is, of course, the, the consonant vowel linking. We talked about this many, many times. But there's another interesting link. It's the, it's the letter of, uh, it's when you have two vowel sounds. Sometimes an, another R appears. We have the y sound and we have another consonant vowel link and we have a w sound. So this means when you're reading something like this, you should, it should, it should sound like, so what turns an area? What turns an area? Turns an area. It's together. And then when you get to area, there's a little r sound. What turns an area of, area of, area of, so there's an extra sound here of the ocean, the y, y. So this is the y sound. 
in the ocean into the ocean into into it's together into a dead zone to a dead zone into a dead zone so these are just some extra sounds that is there any rules for this there are Why a few rules we use the r or uh, there are or, a few uh, rules what, or yeah yeah, there are a few rules. One of the rules is it says that if you have a consonant sound, if, if for example, the last letter is a consonant and the first letter is a vowel, then you will have, then you will have uh, a link. So this is actually the first rule. We link words that end in a consonant with words that start with a vowel, like turns an area, turns an area. So this happens. And then it says we link a vowel sound when when the other one has a vowel sound. So in the first rule, we have consonant plus vowel. If you have consonant plus vowel, you have a link, but with no extra sound, just link, okay? But if you have vowel vowel, this is the rule. Whenever you have a two vowels together, there is usually an extra an extra sound, an added sound. That that is added. That it's not. That is not originally in the word. So here, actually, there's no R. Area of there's no R. But if you listen to it, you will hear the R. Area of. And I'm just going to. I um, know oh this is in the middle. Uh, so there are these added sounds. So in these three examples. I have a question, please. Sure, go ahead. Uh. Mm -hmm. A vowel and vowel, we use a uh, wa or ya yeah or ra. Uh, okay? That's correct. But That's how correct. we know? How we know if uh, it's wa or ya yeah or ra? Uh, um, how we know that? To be honest, I'm not I, sure because we we had it in a in a separate lesson. They were explaining it. It depends on the it depends on the vowel itself. So, for example, if you have the the e sound, the the ocean because remember with the, with the normally whenever you use the with a vowel so for example the umbrella so this is a linking sound but for example if you use the with a consonant word you see even the pronunciation is different the book but the umbrella i think you know this rule right the E, yes. the umbrella, and the book. So here in this situation, because uh, the word that came after the starts with a vowel, we have to change the sound a little bit, the umbrella. The umbrella, the elephant, the eggs, uh, and so on. So this is one rule, one of them. This is when you have the Y, y sound. Um, usually you have the R sound if, if the last vowel is an A, the area of, or for example, another word, for example, we go over um, to live to Andrew, uh, Andrew Evans, Andrew Evans. For example, here, let's let's go here, Malak, to the second part. This way we can find the rules together. It's a better, okay. it's a better, it's, it's an easier way. So let's take a look at this. And I want you to guess, you guess which added vowel should we use? Remember, we have three groups. We have the consonant, mm -hmm. we have the consonant vowel sound like this one. Can you see this? This is the first example. So here consonant vowel, but then we have vowel yeah. vowel. Okay? okay. So a British tourist has been attacked, been attacked. Do not, no added sound, just link it, but no added sound, okay? Yeah. Buy, buy, buy a shark, buy a shark, buy a shark. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a slight yeah sound. Because if you don't do this, it will be a little heavy, right? You'll say buy, a, uh, you will have to stop. But if you, if you add the sound, you'll find yourself doing it more naturally. Attacked by a shark. By a shark off the coast of Texas. The coast of, coast of, can you see this? Coast of, coast of, consonant, mm -hmm. vowel. This is a link. And vowel, yeah. Coast of, link. coast of, coast of Texas. Making it 
what what letter should we add here? What added yeah. sound? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. exactly. V, V8, 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 V8. Mm -hmm. uh, the eighth shark attack, shark attack. Is there a link here? Consonant vowel, right? Shark yes. attack, attack, shark attack. Shark attacking, again, another one. Attacking in America. America. In America this year, in America this, no, there's no link here because it has to be consonant vowel, not vowel consonant. Do you get the idea? Mm -hmm. So shark attack, yeah. in, shark attack in America, shark attack in America. These, these four words are together. We now, what, what sound is Go added? Wa, wa, exactly. I think wa. You're right. Go mm. over, go over, go over because the O and the O, if you don't use a, a wa sound, you will have to stop. Go over. But if you use the wa, you can continue. Go over. Live. Which one? Which added sound here? I think yeah. To yeah. yant. Do, should we say to yantra? To yantra. Or mm -hmm. can you think oh, of maybe. Ra. to randru? No. To wa wa. Exactly. Yeah, because we yeah. we have a, a dub, we have an O, so a what is closer to Andrew to Andrew. We now we now go over live to Andrew, to Andrew. What about here? Maybe R. To Andrew Evans to Andrew, Andrew Evans, mm -hmm. because we have an R here, and do you think it will be easy to use another R? To, mm -hmm. to Andrew Evans, mm -hmm. can you think of another sound? Maybe yeah. To Andrew what Evans. Sound? Uh huh. To Andrew Evans. Wow. Yes. What? It's a it's a what sound? Mm -hmm. Right, Malak. أقرب واحدة للصوت الأخير لين. Andrew Evans. Evans. صح ولا؟ زي live to wandro yes. live to wandro wevens wover مشيات أسهل مع الصوت الجاي what about this one we are correct for a for a special for a because remember it's usually the, the the r in British English it's usually silent so they if it's in a normal place they'll say for for but here, because it's can it's linked, so it should sound for a special, for a special, for a special report. Andrew, I. What? Uh, yeah, I understand. I, uh, I, uh, I understand. I understand. Correct. I understand that the man didn't. No. Yeah, no. didn't do anything, anything, didn't do anything. Of course, when we're doing it now together slowly, it sounds so strange, it sounds so wrong, yeah. right? But when you listen to it done in, by a native and done in, in normal, normal talking speed, you'll see that it sounds very natural. So I'm just going to play the first part. Um, so I want you to pay attention to how she uh, because the female reporter Beverly she's the one who's speaking in the beginning so notice how she makes all these links and she makes it in a very natural way so here we go let's listen track 34 a British tourist has been attacked by a shark off the coast of Texas making it the eighth shark attack in America this year we now go over live to Andrew Evans for a special report. Andrew, I understand that the man didn't do anything unusual to cause this attack. Did you see? Would you like to listen one yeah. last time? Just let's listen one last yeah. time to the beginning and see how she does all the, the added sounds and everything. Track 34. 
A British tourist has been attacked by a shark off the coast of Texas, making it the eighth shark attack in America this year. We now go over live to Andrew Evans for a special report. Andrew, I understand that the man didn't do anything unusual to cause this attack. Okay, so mm -hmm. these are these are examples of linking, examples of added sounds. So mm, there isn't exactly a rule, but you can guess if if the ending is is a W or an O. This means you're likely to use a what sound. But if it's, for example, I and you, I understand. So it, it's I think it's all by ear. Anyways, this is the idea. Now, let's do a little bit of vocab and some reading. But first of all, let me show you these words and let's see if you know what these words are. So we have conscious, estimate, uh, a park ranger, harm, a lifeguard, attach. Hmm. So are any of these words new? Or do you know all of these words? Are yes, they, I am. You know them? Estimate. Estimate. Estimate is when you want to give, an, give a number of something. For example, if I want to know how many, if I want to know how much a company makes, how much money, I can make an estimate. I'll say, I think, I think they make about $500,000 a year. This is an estimate. يعني زي تقدير أو تقييم تقدير قصد مع الأرقام estimate يعني تكهن بالأرقام أو تكهن بالتقدير يعني a park ranger a park ranger a park ranger is like it's like an employee someone who's responsible for taking care of a park like excuse me a park ranger is like a, it's like a bodyguard or um, not a bodyguard. It's a bit like a soldier or someone or a security guard maybe. But this security guard is responsible for the park. He takes care of the park. He looks out for animals. He helps the people. And when we say park ranger, because in the US their parks are not like here in Libya, two by two meters. We're talking about, you know, giant parks. Like, uh, for example, like Jdain. Do you know Jdain near, near Zaria? Do you know this park, no. national park? Uh, do you have any national parks in near Sabha? No. Uh, no. Uh, شوف شنو اسمه غابة 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 جدين يسموه فيها هي مش غابة غابة لكن مكان كبير يعني بوسكو زي ما تقولي شجر وكذا فهذا يعتبروا الأماكن الكبيرة هذه عادة في الغرب عندهم يبدأ شخص مسؤول موظف مسؤول على أمن المكان لو في مثلا حيوانات برية يرد باله منهم فاميليز بروبلمز كذا هي تيكس كير أوف ذا بارك ذيس إز ذا مينينغ أوف بارك رينجر Okay. Um, park ranger, do you know what it means, Hajar? Park ranger, how, how can you explain park ranger for us? What is a park ranger? What does, he, what does a park ranger do exactly? Okay, Hajar is not there. But this is the idea. Okay, so now we're going to do some reading. It says here, look at the article of the, the title of the article. What do you think happened to Jesse? Okay, can you, can you see the article here? Let me just put a little box on it. Can you see the title? Yeah, no, yeah. no, not yet. Here in the yes, bottom? No, yeah. Can, can you read it for, yeah. for me, please? What does it say? Saving, saving this, uh, this is Jesse's. Um, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Lo, uh, Lucy uh, Atkins, 
describes the battle or to save the life of the of a young boy. Mm. So, so what what do you expect the article to be about? What do you think it's about? Maybe about arm and uh, um, maybe there is a war. Maybe mm. maybe for saving someone's life. Okay. Mm. But what happened to, mm. to, to this person's life? Why, why is this person's life in danger? Yeah, maybe they attacked or I, animals or, so, or something. Okay, maybe they were, they, were an they were attacked by an animal. You could be right. You might yeah. be right. Mm. Okay, good guess. Now, let me give you some time to read this article. So I'm going to give you some time to read the article and find out what, what really happened, okay? So you can start here. And when you need me to move down, just let me know and I can scroll down, okay? So you can start here at 8 p.m. Uh, can you move it down, please? Yes, let's move it. And I don't want to move too much because maybe Malak hasn't finished.
means I finish uh, this part. Okay, let's move it a little. Okay, have you finished? Finished, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. What do you think of this uh, stuff? What do you think of it? So, yes, it is the. I always said about uh, Jesse. Tragic you, story. It's it's a it's a tragic. Tra <laughs> yes, I think it's a tragic story. Um, do you know why? In my opinion, I think it's a tragic story because the shark only only bit the arm. And this means the shark couldn't have a full meal and the boy is going to live without an arm. But, and he will, he's going to feel uh, pain for the rest of his life because now he doesn't have an arm. But for example, if he was eaten, the whole boy, then the boy wouldn't feel any pain in his life. And uh, the shark would have had a complete meal. So I think this is, for me, this is a tragedy. <laughs> I, I think that uh, it should have been a bit, they should have changed it a little bit. But do you think it's a real story or do you think it's a made up story? What do you think? How do you feel about this story? What do you think, Haji? How real is this story? How do you yeah, feel about it? It happened. I think I think it's real because it happened, I think. Because when a shark, I think, is hungry, they uh, uh, they came to the uh, uh, to the beach. Correct. They come close to the beach. This part is real. So big. But oh, I yeah. think I think for me this paragraph is a little. I don't know. Can you see this paragraph? Especially the the last part of the yeah, paragraph. Yeah, yeah. Because um, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how it, how they killed the shark and yeah, I think. Because they're talking about pulling a shark out of the water, like as if the shark is uh, is a cat or yeah. or a puppy or something. <laughs> yeah, true. And um, so I don't know. And also this part, can you can you see this part? So it says one of them opened the shark the shark's mouth 
while the other one pulled. <laughs> yeah. the... it, it sounds like, like the shark is just waiting. Mask. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's something that maybe maybe the shark is just waiting. Okay, quickly pull it out. So I don't know. It felt a little, but the beginning was very good. I think it was convincing. The, the you know how they talked about the location, the date. I think it's good. There are many tips here to take from from this kind of story. If someone wants to learn how to write a convincing story. But I still don't know if it's real or not. I think it's going to be hard to, to confirm it. Unless we can Google it. Last time I actually tried Googling it. I couldn't find a real, a real report. So because I was, this is impossible. This can't be true. I was so confused. So I actually checked it and um, I couldn't find a, a real report. So it might just be, you know, is this just a, an imaginary news report? But the style it's written in, because in this is way, yeah, a good way. In, in a very good way. It's actually written like a, like a factual uh, piece of information, because in today's yeah. lesson, this is the focus of today's lesson. It says, listening to an, a, a TV news report and reading a newspaper article. So it's written in a newspaper article style. That's why it's uh, it's clear, it's easy to, to read, and it's convincing at the same time. It's written well, that's why. Um, like, like a piece of, uh, this is journalistic English, a kind of um, English that's used by journalists in newspapers, news reports, this, this kind of thing. The kind of English you can find on CNN, a website, BBC, Al Jazeera English, if you're looking for a news report, and you can you can try it later after the lesson. Just go to one of these websites, check any report, and you'll probably see an article written in in this in this style. Okay, now enough talking about this story. Let's check a few questions. It says here true or false. Let's see how much you remember. Number one, it says the shark bit off Jesse's arm. Is this true or false? Part of, no, it's a part, uh, I think the whole, the, uh, the whole arm from the shoulder. Yeah, that's correct. You're right. It's not it's part, part of, of, correct. Then number two, it says, I, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, it, it was his whole arm, not, not a part of it. You're right. Okay, number two. Un Jesse's uncle pulled the shark out of the water by himself. Is this true or false? Uh, no. The... Mm, let's both. take a look. The... What does it say here? He's trying, but he couldn't, I think. Hmm. What does it say? He managed. What does it mean, managed? He, he managed. managed. Uh, uh, not imagined. This is not imagined. He managed. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, man managing or uh, yeah, manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, managed. <laughs> managed, it means he was able to with difficulty. Mm. You get the idea? So for, let's say, for example, you have an exam tomorrow, yeah. or maybe you had an exam yesterday, and it was really, really difficult. It was so difficult. But then when you're telling your friend, you say, it was the hardest exam in my life, but I managed to pass, thank God. Do you get the idea? Yeah, so but I can jet. I I did it with difficulty, but but I did it in the end. So this is what they're saying here. So mm -hmm. does this mean number two? Is it true or is it false according to this information? Yeah, true. It's true. So this means number one is false. Number two is true. All right. Then it says number three. Jesse's uncle shot the shark and then got Jesse's arm from inside it. 
Who shot the shark? I think it's, uh, no, it's not uh, his uncle. Correct, not the... his uncle. Yeah. Yeah, it was the, the firefighter and I think uh, the park ranger was the one who shot the shark. So this is false. Jesse might be able to use his arm normally in the future. Yes, true. Okay. And then it says the park ranger said shark attacks are very common. No. Yes, you're right. He said they're very uncommon. Uncommon. Uncommon, yeah. You're right. Okay, so this is this is the idea. This is an example of a news report of a newspaper article or a newspaper report. This it's usually in this style. Okay, let, let's focus a little bit on vocab now. So this lesson we're gonna learn a few tricks. They're not difficult, but they're very, very useful actually. We're gonna talk about prefixes and opposites other prefixes, suffixes. So we're gonna mix all of them together. First of all, let, let me remind you what a prefix is and a suffix is. Or maybe you know already, what is a suffix and a prefix, Azure? What's the difference between them and how do we use them? When we say prefix, what do we prefix, usually mean? Prefix is uh, the... Um... Oh, what we added in the word at the beginning. Correct, exactly right. Mm. A prefix is in the beginning. So this yes. means the suffix is the opposite, right? Yes, at the end. You're right, that's, that's the idea. So prefix, suffix, this is what it is. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to take a look at all the words in the article itself. It says here we often use the prefixes Ah, okay, so this is the first rule. We use the prefixes un, this, something, something, and something to make opposites of words. So maybe we should look at the blue words and? first. M, yeah. did we, do we have an M? Yes, we do, like impossible, right? M, M. So this is the first one, M. Let's, let's move down and for, try to find others. In. In, correct. And mm. er. Um, and er, correct. So and these are three. Do we want homatona tlata mak? Yes, exactly right. That's exact. And we have three spaces. Yeah. So this means we have the im, I am, like impossible. We have the in, I n, like incorrect. And we have the er, I r, like irresponsible. So these are three prefixes, and whenever you use them on an adjective, you will give the, the opposite meaning. So this is the first idea. Okay, so now we've got a bit of an a bit of a guessing exercise. Can you see all of these words in the box? All of these yeah. are, of course, all of them are, of course, uh, adjectives, right? Now, I want you to make them into opposites by using the prefixes that we were just talking about. Now, there isn't exactly a rule. There is a bit of a rule. I mean, when to use un, when to use this, when to use, but some of them are kind of guessing. So I want you to just guess, correct or not, doesn't matter because we're going to check them, but just give me your best guess. And if it's correct from the beginning, I'll just mark it correct for you. And the other ones will check together, okay? So okay. I, I tell you, I read out the, the, the adjective, you give me the opposite, okay? So believable. Unbelievable. Is it un, un, or is it in, in? N. You mean in? Yes. Okay, what about patient? Quickly, 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 quickly. <laughs> uh, impatient. With an I N or with an I M? 
I am. Right. Believable okay. M. I am. Which one? I believe uh, oh. the first one. I am? Yes. No, it's not. What about selfish? Uh, I'm selfish. Is it with using what? Time, I hit that guy. Yeah, because some of them are actually not very commonly yeah. used. Okay, what about honest? Do the ones you know. Let's start with the ones you know first. Okay, honest. Uh, N, N oh. honest. Not exactly. What about regular? I think you know this. Regular, you know it from grammar? Irregular. Right. Yeah. And polite, I think you know polite. Um, polite. True, true. And what about, I think you also know formal, the opposite. Yeah, formal. Correct. Okay, that's not bad. What about, I think you know organized. Uh-huh, correct. Insensitive. Organized, um, what's the opposite? Organized. Organized. Hmm. What about considerate? Hmm. N. With I am or I N or U N. Organized, disorganized. Correct. I think that's, I... Sa, that's right. Okay. Considerate. And considerate. Correct. But is it I am or I N? I N. Correct. Inconsiderate. Mm -hmm. In, uh, what about. Uh, uh, honest. Un uh, uh, Unhonest. Mm, not N, quite. I think. Not exactly. What about what about mature? I'm sure you know the opposite. Mature N. I N or I N or U N. U N, I think. Not exactly. Similar. Some of them are actually quite difficult to guess, yes, by the way. Right. Yes. Um, Unhelpful. Yes. Mm. Selfish. Unselfish? Correct. Uh, yes, unselfish. Through. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My memory came back. Yeah. The, the clouds are slowly moving away, you know? There's there's a little hazard in your mind. <laughs> She's just pushing away the clouds. Go away. She's trying to remember. Honest. Dishonest. Correct. It can't be. No. Yeah, you're right. Dishonest, dishonest? is yes. Dishonest. Yeah. We only have reliable? three left. Yeah, reliable. What's the opposite? Irre irre irreliable. Irreliable. Um, not quite. Un unreliable. There Very you are. Unreliable. Unreliable. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hazardous came back. Yeah, she's she's awake finally. <laughs> what uh, we have believable? We only have unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> you you really weren't there at all. You just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, it's coming back. 
<laughs> so we only have three left, actually. Just Lonely. the last three. Uh huh. Yeah. So we only have three. Uh, loyal. Disloyal. Disloyal. Loyal. Loyal. Disloyal. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Mature. Mature. Mm hmm. Can you say it again? Yes. Immature. Yes. Yes. Immature. And mm. ambitious. The last one. Ambitious. Ambitious. Mm. Try another one. Or this. Mm -hmm. Disambitious. Not this. Unambitious. That's it. Unambitious. Let's take a look and just confirm these very quickly from the list. And there's also a tip on, on what rules to use. But I think if you if you do it right once, excuse me, if you do it right, right once, then it sticks. You won't, you won't forget it, I think. 68. All right, here we are. OK, can you see it? This is uh, the prefixes and opposite list. So with the ungroup, we've got but we also have other words, not from the story, maybe. Anyway, so we've got uh, Can it un unbelievable, Jutna? Unhelpful, Jutna? Unambitious, unreliable, unselfish. With this, Jutna, dishonest, disorganized, disloyal, dissimilar. With the M, Lijuna, Malakhirat, impatient, impolite, immature. Within, jutna, inconsiderate, informal, insensitive, and the er, we had both of them. Irresponsible, the irresponsible can Irregular here, jutna, All right. So, so this means all of your answers are correct, which is great. And here are some nice tips that might help a little bit. If you check the first tip or the first rule, it says. With verbs, you can even use these prefixes with some verbs, not all of them. For example, do, undo, lock, unlock, appear, disappear, right? These are not adjectives. These are yeah. verbs, but in some verbs, you, you can use it in, in some, not all of them. Play, replay, uh, what else? Yeah. Some of them. Okay, so here are two general rules. If you've got a P, if your adjective starts with a P, it's very likely you will use M. Impossible, impatient, impolite, impress, unprecise. Precise, imprecise. No, I'm not sure precise what to use. But generally speaking, if you've got a letter P, you might find yourself using M. With the R, you'll probably need to use er. So responsible, irresponsible, regular, irregular. But reliable, unreliable. Do you get the idea? So these are not, yes. you know, they're not clear cut rules. They don't always work, but they might help a little bit. This is the idea. All right, now let's take a look at the next exercise. Now this time we're gonna mix. In the pink words, we we not only have prefixes, but we also have suffixes. So it says here, look at the pink words in the article, underline the prefixes and suffixes, then complete the table with these meanings and the words in and the words in pink. Let's start with the pink words and let's try to look at each one. So the first word, underestimate. So what do we have here? Do we have a prefix or do we have a suffix? Do we have a prefix? Correct. Under? Under, that's right. Reattach? It's a prefix. Correct. Re right, right. Over-optimistic? Uh, it's a, a prefix. Correct. Over. Correct, correct. Hopeful? Uh, it's a suffix. Right, so, right, right. And harmless? Uh, suffix, less. All right, so now we know which ones are which. 
Now we want to see the meaning itself. So for example, when we have the prefix re, what's the meaning? Is it too much? Is it without? Is it with? Is it do it again? Well, what, for example, uh, like here we have uh, reattach. Re uh, yeah. So the, re the re do something again. Correct. That's right. So if you've got re, it usually means to do something again. What about over, like over optimistic? Too much. That's it. So over optimistic is too much. What about, ah, uh, oh, sorry, it's in the second box. Too much with over optimistic. Full, like hopeful. With. Correct, with hope. Beautiful, with beauty, right? Colorful, with yeah. color and so on. And this means less. What color? So less is something without. without. So if you say harmless, useless, harmless without harm, useless without use, and so on. All right. And if we want to use an example for each one from the article with re, what did we use with re? We use? Uh, reattach. Yes, reattach. And with over, we use optimistic. Over optimistic. With full, we used hope. Hopeful, hope. hopeful. And with less, we used what did we use with less? Uh huh. Harmless, uh, right? Harmless, I think. Yeah, harmless. Yeah. In the end. All right. So this exercise focused mainly, mainly about. Uh, the meaning, the meaning of the suffix or the meaning of the, the, the prefix. So you have different meanings because in number six, we didn't talk about meanings at all, just opposites. The prefixes we used here, uh, this, un, in, im, er, these are just for opposites. But here in this group, you can, there are a few different meanings. All right, so let me put back the answers. This time, what we want to do is we want to use these uh, uh, we want to use these prefixes and suffixes, but I want you to be able to mix them if you can and use them for this box here. And there's more than one possible answer if you if you see what the question says. The question says which prefixes and suffixes can you use with these words? There's sometimes more than one possible answer. So try to think as of, of as many as you can. All right. And yeah, let's, hello. hello, welcome back. Thanks. So for example, the verb paid. What, what prefix is repaid. repaid, repay him, repay him, repay him. Maybe, but. There are better ones, I think. Overpaid. Overpaid. Very good. This means if this means someone is getting paid more than he deserves, right? Yeah. Maybe he's, maybe he's not a very good artist. He's not a very good worker, but he's getting too much money. He's overpaid. So if you say overpaid, you can also say. Paidless. What's the opposite of overpaid? underpaid right under yeah underpaid this means maybe the employee is is good but he's not getting enough right so with paid i think the best two overpaid underpaid what about right the verb right which of these pre rewrite. Rewrite. rewrite i think the most rewrite. famous one is mm -hmm. rewrite correct mm -hmm. write yeah. it again so if you if you hand if you hand in an essay, which is not written very well to your department in university, maybe they'll tell you, you know, rewrite it. Please rewrite it again. Pain. Painless. Painless, painless. painful. Both are correct. Mm -hmm. So if you go and have an operation, they give you anesthesia so you can have a painless operation. But of course, later it will be painful when the drugs 
wear off. Sleep. Sleepless. 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 A sleepless night. Correct. Correct. Uh, but you can also use another two from this list. Sleepful. Mm, not sleepful. No. You can use it. Oversleep. Example. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So if you wake up late to work, maybe your friend will say, why are you so late? You say, oh, I overslept. I overslept. Yeah. So oversleep is correct. Charge. Here we mean charge for money, of course. Charge full. Mm. Charge. Recharge. 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 Yeah. Recharge, yeah. We can even use mm -hmm. recharge for your phone battery, not just for money or for credit yeah. or for mm -hmm. something. We recharge. Or charge less. I don't think so. Charge less. Mm -hmm. Recharge, okay. correct. But there are two others we can use. Overcharge. Overcharge, exactly. So maybe you go to a shop mm -hmm. and you buy a bottle of water that, that costs <laughs> maybe two dinars, okay? But in the cashier, they take five dinars from you, maybe by mistake. So this means they overcharged you. They took more than necessary, right? Overcharge. This means yeah. when someone takes more money from you than necessary. But this means we can also use the opposite of overcharge. Yes, the chargeless. Mm. Chargeless. No, the other one, the other opposite. Charge uh, for undercharge. Undercharge. undercharge yes. So this means you can talk to your friend and you can say, oh, I need I need to, to give my, uh, I need to go back to the shop and pay them five dinars. Why? Because they undercharged me. They forgot, they forgot to count uh, something. Do you get the ideas? Sometimes this happens. But what do you do if this happens? Azure, for example, let's say you're, you're buying something and maybe the, the cashier forgets to charge an item and they undercharge you. So you pay 10 dinars instead of 15. What do you do when you find out at home, for example? Mm, I went back to the uh, to the shop. Mm, you go back and you tell you tell them that oh you you know you need you still need five dinars from me. Forget. Mm. Yeah. But but why don't you do why don't you think of it as a as a gift from Allah that maybe he he wants <laughs> you to he's saving you money and this thing happened you didn't mean it I mean you didn't plan for it. And it's not your fault, right? What do you think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's true. So, but so instead, of instead of taking I, I, it back, mm -hmm, you can say, thank God, alhamdulillah. Yeah, and, I, you know, you're, you just... It um, happened to me some uh, one day. Mm -hmm. uh, I buy new makeup. Mm -hmm. And... The, um, the card okay. doesn't. Uh, the, the card the didn't card. work. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they think it's a uh, work, but uh, when I uh, came back to home, I see what was in my card. They uh, and uh, the, the, you didn't uh, pay anything. Yes. So I came back to uh, I okay. went back to the shop and told to, told him. So he gave it to me another <laughs> gift. <laughs> mm. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. But you can you can also think of it in the in the first way, right? That it's a gift from from God. <laughs> no, no, I can't. <laughs> no, <laughs> because it was the cashier, so maybe they they, they will, will take the money from him. Have a problem with the yeah. But if they take the yeah. money from him, this is also a good thing for him. This is a lesson from Allah to, to pay attention at work next time. So everybody <laughs> learns something. Everybody gets yeah. something. Anyway, so yeah, okay. they sometimes use this in English, overcharge, undercharge, uh, they sometimes use it. Okay, care, I think this is also easy, you can do it, care. Yes, careless, careless or careful. Careful, careful. 
correct, correct. Mary, what about Mary? I think only one of them we can use here for Mary. Which one do you think? Not remarry. Remarry is correct. <laughs> yeah, remarry. So if a person is divorced, if a person is divorced and they want yeah. to marry again, we can say, oh, Ahmed, he remarried after his divorce, for example. Or Fatma remarried. It means she got married again. This is the meaning. So it's correct. Success is also easy, I think. Successful. 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 I think, Successful. yeah, successful mm -hmm. is the only one, I think, over, you know, the other one is strange. I don't think we can use them. Play. Uh, uh, replay. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, are, we can also sometimes say playful. If you want to describe children like, like, mm. who like to play a lot, or, or for example, sometimes animals, you can say puppies are very playful or kittens are playful. Mm. It means they play a lot. They like to play. Use, I think yeah. it's also easy. Useless. Useless. Yeah, useless. What else? Useful. 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 Correct. Any, anything else? Useless, useful. What else? Uh, useless, use, useless, useful. Correct. Overused. 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 Reuse. Reused. Correct. Reused. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reused. Hatta overused, Sahra. Overused. It means if you yeah. use something too much, it's overused. Mm -hmm. You know, underused. Mm, you can use it, but it's not very common. Maybe you have a feature in your phone or something that's underused. It means you don't use it enough. I don't know, it sounds a little weird, but reuse, definitely correct. Overused is correct, useful, useless. So in this exercise in part B, we mixed. We mixed, uh, ah, all of these are verbs actually. Paid, write, paint, ah, no, they're mixed. Khalat. Paid is a verb, write, verb, pain is a noun, sleep is a noun or verb. They're mixed here, not only nouns or verbs. So this is the idea. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we, before we do this part, number eight, let's take a quick look and see if there are any tips worth mentioning in the summary about this, this part here. Let's take a look. So we covered the first part. Now let's cover the second part. Ah, we have the answers, very nice. Okay, so this means we can see all of them and we can confirm them. Let's take a look, let's find out. So, underestimate, underpaid, undercharge, underuse, reattach, repaid. Repaid is correct, you said repaid, Hajj. Rewrite, recharge, remarry, replay, reuse. Over optimistic, overpaid, oversleep, overcharge, overuse. I had to underuse Surata, underuse. So it's correct, but it's not very common. I don't see it a lot. I see overuse more. Hopeful, painful, careful, successful, playful, useful, harmless, painless, sleepless, careless, useless. All right, very nice. So it means all of our answers are correct. We don't have any mistakes here. So we can go back. All right, so here in this exercise, it's a bit of a speaking exercise. It says, think of an exciting or frightening experience that has happened to you or someone you know and make notes. Hmm. Okay, so let me explain, let me explain this exercise and what you need to do. So I want you to think of a story, okay? Think of something that maybe happened to you or doesn't have to be to you, maybe to your friend or anybody you know, okay? Uh, and of course you can change uh, if, this, if the story is a bit private, maybe about someone close, 
he could change the details, change the name, change who the person is. If it's a friend, you can say someone, whatever, all right? You need to say when and where this thing happened, but it has to be, it has to be exciting or frightening experience. A bit similar to the story of the shark that uh, was shot and Jesse's arm, something like this. So you need to say when and where it happened, how the story started, the main events, and what happened in the end. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few minutes to think of a few details. It might help if you have a pen and paper, write a few notes, just it's just a headline. You don't have to write, you know, a whole essay, just, just a few words. And, and when you're ready, you can tell me your story and you can make it up. It doesn't have to be real. If it's, if it's real, that's fine. Maybe that's easier, but you can also, you can also make it up. Okay. So I'll give you, maybe I'll think of a story. Let, let me also think of a story. I have a one. Nice. Okay. Tell us your story. Mm, the story happened to my brother and his um, children in Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, they went out. Mm -hmm and put some food to the dogs and cats in the street. Mm -hmm. And they just put it down. The dogs, <laughs> the dogs came to him. Mm -hmm. mm, three dogs, I think, and they are hungry. And uh, my brother, he is only with uh, his two boys. Uh, with his boys too. Mm -hmm. And they are children. So, <laughs> yeah. Did, did the dogs want to uh, eat the children? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the children start crying and the dogs start. <laughs> and my brother, <laughs> he didn't can do anything. Just when uh, he um, uh, <laughs> went to run with his children, uh, the dogs can uh, start him. to run with him <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he just um, thank thankful is uh, they didn't uh, pet the, his boy because mm. they... <laughs> but just then um, some men uh, knows that it's... Uh, um, knows that there's a dog and there's a uh, children crying. So they came to my brother and, <laughs> and they have to. Uh, so they are very, yeah. <laughs> but uh, he is very frightened, frightened from him, from the dogs. Yeah. So your, your brother is now frightened of dogs. No, you are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, you are alone with two cats and three dogs, three hungry dogs, you know, <laughs> you can't do anything. <laughs> and happened to me also in Tunisia mm -hmm. uh, with my nephew. Uh -huh. um, uh, we, live, uh, we live in house in 2011. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the house is near to my uncle's house because we have uh, I have uncles who live in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just 
and I was um, uh, 15 years old and mm -hmm. my nephew just three years old. Uh -huh. And uh, I want to go to my uncle's house with my nephew. So when I went, <laughs> the <laughs> there's a dog there. Was also, it hungry? <laughs> he want, yeah. <laughs> he wanted a snack, a human snack. Yes. <laughs> uh, so it was, uh, but the uh, the one thing helped me is. Uh, my nephew, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, slept her uh, shoes down so and starts crying. So I just um, uh, <laughs> uh, just um, I want to pick up the shoes. So he fry, uh, he terrified to. Because um, after that, I know when you see the dog and start the, يعني يعني يخوف فيك أنت تطبس راح تضرب فهو يهرب. so 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 the dog ran away. It it thought that your nephew was going to throw something. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yes. So that's a hap so so it means luckily yeah. in both in both your stories we didn't have the same situation as Jesse. No, nobody lost an arm or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well that's that's a happy ending for both stories, I think. It's a good thing nothing happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but usually dogs when they're very hungry, I don't think they I don't think they will attack the person who's trying to feed them. Like, uh, like in the first situation with your brother, or, or did he say that the dogs um, wanted to, to bite him, wanted to attack him? Yeah, yes. Um, he grip at little ones, Ah, I see. So, so they wanted to, to bite, mm. yeah. Yeah, I think I think with kids one has to be, I think one needs to be really careful with, with kids and animals. So it's a bit of a dangerous combination. Yeah. Mm, okay, so that's a very interesting story, similar to Jesse, in a way, but with a happy ending. Mm, okay, so let me show you what we'll talk about in our next lesson. We also have a nice part here to discuss. We're going to talk about a hiking trip and um, we will excuse me we want to learn language which can help us give warnings and give advice so there are a few expressions here that are very useful if you want to give advice and if you want to give uh, warnings of course if you want to give a warning you are more likely to use imperatives Right? Like here, don't wear new boots, don't lose sight, be careful, watch out, uh, make sure, don't forget, you know, these kind of, this kind of language. And there's lots of imperatives because this is a bit of a warning. So we're going to learn how to use these kind of words. And also we'll learn a little bit about uh, camping vocabulary. So some of the things that people usually take when they go camping. So we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll do a nice exercise here. We'll talk a little bit about pronunciation. These different, these three different sounds. The e, e sound like ear, and the e uh, like where, er, uh, er, bear, pear, and then we have the the long sound uh, earthquake, learn, search. So we'll practice these three different sounds. I don't know if we can finish that and go to number nine or not, but let's see. Okay, so that's all for tonight. Thank you very much for your time. And I'll see you again on Saturday. So have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Peter. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Good, good night. Good night. Bye.